okay y'all so this is it I told y'all I was a little skeptical on doing it but this right here is gonna be our Android unit from Hi Kitty so we're gonna go ahead and unbox her and see exactly what all she comes with inside the box Unit out. Drop it there. How's these instruction manuals? Rear view camera. Wires. It's going to be your brackets. So that's everything that comes inside the box right there. So we got everything out the package right there. Right here we're going to have all of our wire harnesses. We'll open that up in a second. We got the rear view camera and all of its plugs right here. Got your installation brackets, universal. Gonna have your Android manual right here. And you're gonna have the operation installation guide. So that's gonna be our unit right there. It's gonna be how thin she goes right there. Wire harness on the back for all your AV pins. And what I actually like about these decks, some people don't like them, but I like the fact that they still got the rotary knobs on this right here. So everything is now 100% touchscreen if you don't want to use the screen. It is 100% touchscreen, I'm going to rephrase that, but you don't have to go by the screen if you don't want to. So that's the deck right there. wire harness right there this is going to be the cable right here for your rear view camera this is going to be your other USB cable right here you're going to get the GPS adapter first USB cable And your last set of AV cables right there. The wiring harness we're going to use to install it in this Chrysler 300 is going to be the Scotia CR4000SW. I went with this one particularly because this one will let me keep my steering wheel controls. So I'm going to go ahead and wire it up and open this up and show you how that looks like. So once you have your Scotia wiring harness outside of the package, this should be pretty much what you should have right here. These two connections right here, these are going to go actually to the factory connections of your car. These right here are pretty basic. Whenever you're wiring up any deck, all these wires right here are pretty going to go to where the wires are on your deck. You're going to go yellow to yellow, red to red white to white, green to green, gray to gray, etc, etc. And then when it comes to the steering wheel keys, you'll see that they'll actually be labeled on your wirings. So you know this is going to be my key one. And then if we go over here, we're going to have our key two. So depending on what kind of setup you have or what kind of stereo you have in your car, this right here is going to be the steering wheel connector. You're going to have one option either through your three millimeter cable or you're going to have to connect it to your key one and your key two connections. 
So that's going to be how you're going to connect it to your wire harness. It's pretty simple and it's very basic. So I'm not really going to show that whole process, but I am going to go ahead now and wire this up and then show you what it looks like after it's all done. All right, so pretty much we got all that done for the most part. Everything wired up with that steering wheel harness. Right here. I'm just using tape right now. I'm not gonna use posi connectors or heat connectors, none of that right now because um, I'm not exactly sure if I'm even gonna keep this deck inside the car. We're gonna see exactly how she works and everything like that before we make that final decision. Now I didn't do my speaker wires on my backup camera because all that's pre-wired to the car through another amp. So we're gonna do that once we actually get inside the car. But we are gonna take this right here now and flip her over. And all this at this point, again, is pretty basic. So at this point now, you can just pretty much just plug in all your connections to the back of your deck. USB one. Put them upside down. USB two. Rear view camera. AV cables. Now when it comes to this GPS antenna, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people try to find all sorts of different places to put this at in your car. You really don't have to. You can take this and just mount it anywhere behind the stereo close to the top and you'll still get perfect reception. The only time you're ever going to wind up with problems with the GPS reception is when you're going through a tunnel, under the water, through the mountains, or something like that. But other than that, you don't have to find a special place to put these in your car. It's just my personal opinion. But you can always just sit there and put these somewhere behind the stereo inside your car. That's where your antenna is going to go. So that's going to be a part that's connected to your car. That's going to be the antenna for your stereo. And the last piece we got to connect is going to be the wire and harness. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and um, Walk her to the car, put her in, see exactly what she looks like, and see if it's something we're going to use and leave in the car, or if we're going to keep the old school Sony in. Alright, so here we go. This is pretty much what we're working with right now. It's 2007 Chrysler 300C, and we're going to go ahead and take that Tesla unit and throw her in this one right here. Now it took me a while to decide to go on ahead and do it, but I'm gonna do it. I've been using this old trusty Sony here now for about six years. Had Netflix in the car before people even thought about an Android or iOS CarPlay, but um, want to take her out. I'm sure what we're working with right now on this new high kitty Tesla. Android style radio. I'm gonna be holding the camera while I do this, but if you see this plate right here on these Magnums chargers 300s, it's pretty easy. This piece it really pries off. Fairly simple. You could just get your hands behind there and just pull it. Snaps.
not too much to it. And then when you pull it off for him, you're gonna have those clips right there in the back. Just take out those two clips right there. I'm trying to show you this while I'm holding my camera. So it's gonna be one clip right there. And then the second gray clip that you see right there. After you take those two off, you're gonna to wanna to come up here to the top and take that clip off right there also. Once you have all that taken care of, just grab this centerpiece. Just move her on out the way. Now you'll have that something that looks very similar to something like this. Now I'm kind of lucky because the only thing I was actually holding this deck in was the clips. And I have one screw down there. But if you notice, this screw is broken. That screw on the top is broken along with that one down there. Good thing this is a good dash care from Skosh. Once you get those screws right there taken out pretty much, you just go on ahead and slide your deck out. So now I got a little bit of a mess back there, so I'm gonna actually disconnect all this back here. And we're gonna plug up the new harness and my new AV cables. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I got a mess all over the place in here. I'm not gonna lie to you. Look at this horrible wiring job that I got in there. But I'll be honest, I'm just at this point going through all the old wires that I have in here because I have so many screens and things installed in here. I've been like one of your little project garage house mechanics and I just use whatever I have laying around the garage to get a job done I'm not getting ready to hop out to the store to buy something every single time it's time to get something so anyway at the end of the day it was more of a mess taking out that other deck than it was in putting this one in so again if you want to get your stereos installed you better go off and go ahead and go to your local stereo shop or mechanic I'm just here to show you what to do when it's done so next all right, so when it comes to these stereos, anytime you're gonna deal with one of the Tesla or Android style units, you're gonna to have to get creative with your installs. So this is my bezel right here. This is the deck. There's no way you're actually going to be able to do the standard install by getting a face that big right there inside of that plate. So there's a secret to actually getting those done. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the actual deck and you're going to want to take your frame right there and install all that together first. And then what you're going to have to do next is take your dash kit and install the dash kit onto the deck before you place it right there. The only bad part about that is you're not going to be able to put in all the screws unless you go in there after the fact and using another wrench to get them in sideways. But that's how we're gonna go ahead and slap this one on before I used to go ahead and Velcro them up and do all sorts of other weird ways to get them in. But I got a little homeboy out here and I did one of his installs in his car with the Velcro and that came out looking pretty shitty. I'm not gonna lie to you. It came out looking pretty bad. So um, I'm trying to learn how to do these Android installs with the actual factory face plates that go on with the car. So we're gonna try this this time and show you what it looks like when it's done. That's where we're at right now. All right, so in case any of y'all got confused on what I meant by about uh, installing it to your face plates first, this is what I meant. So that's the deck and it's actually installed to the face plate first. Having it actually installed to the face plate first, I'm not gonna have to sit there and fight with the actual dash kit on getting this extra large deck installed into the actual unit. So um, I'll show you some gaps on where it winds up being at in a minute, but it's the best I can do. So I'm getting ready to show you, so go ahead and slap it in. Another thing I wanted to point out to y'all real quick is um, while I was finishing wiring up all of my AV cables, the deck has in its description and in on the box that it does come with the subwoofer connections. On this stereo, it does not come with subwoofer connections. 
so so um if you're an audiophile and you're really into your subs and all that sound this probably won't be the deck for you but if you're just into communication your apps your basic sounds you're happy with how your factory system sounds you just want more of a tone then yeah this would be great for you but if you're an audiophile and you're looking for the silver connections you're still going to have to do a few upgrades before you get the actual sound that you want out this particular unit All right, so there she goes, fully installed, complete view of her. I'm gonna rip this plastic off now. And that's what you're gonna have. So now we're gonna go on ahead and start her up real quick, show you what she looks like. Now I have to say, honestly, straight out the gate, she comes on pretty fast. That was an accident. But um, yeah, she turns on pretty fast, pretty quick. And again, I haven't used this deck at all. This is my first time using the deck, so it's the home screen. I'm going to get ready to go into the apps.